I'm Scott. I'm Chris. And we're, we're two guys brewing. Today we're fixing to brew up a winter ale, holiday beer, calling it Solstice Ginger. Chris has made it once before last year. Yeah, I did. I made it last year. I made uh, two of them. Uh, there were variations on a the theme. Now, this is the one that didn't call for like a bunch of extra fruit in the secondary, so we can hopefully get it to finish up a little quicker than the other one would have. We're planning on doing an 11 gallon batch and splitting it. Uh, use a couple different kinds of yeast so we can pair what maybe yeah. how that turns out. And this should be a pretty big beer at around well, 7% give or take a little bit. Yeah, when I did it last year it came out at 6.7. So right in the neighborhood of 7%. Alright, it's a pretty simple grain bill. We're, for our 11 pound batch we've got 23 pounds of just two row. And then we're putting in five pounds of Crystal 40 into this one. And then we have some miscellaneous other spices that are going to go in. Uh, using uses Crystal hops. So I'm at uh, a bittering charge at 60 and what is the last one? 10 minutes or something like that? Uh, 15. 15 minutes. So we got, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, when I did this last year, I used a, a Crystal 60, so that's the original recipe was the Crystal 60. Well, that's for the grain, right? Right, but uh, seeing as Scott's got Crystal 40 laying around, we're using that. Yeah, I got a whole <laughs> bag of it that I'm having trouble using up, so this will help get rid of five pounds of it. And then the hops are also called Crystal. And there's, I don't know, four or five ounces of hops in here. Yeah, so we got... Which is actually not very much for an 11 gallon batch. No, so no. It's actually it's, pretty light on the it, hops. It's, the intention is more for the, the, the spices to show through than the hops. But we have a pretty high mash temperature which should leave us some unfermentable sugars and uh, you know kind of a thick sweet body. And then depending on how well our yeast attenuates, it, I'm expecting uh, I was thinking about maybe using uh, Windsor yeast which isn't terribly highly attentive so I should end up with a pretty high final gravity too and that will make uh, maybe all that malty flavor will mix good with yeah, the, uh, you might, yours might, and the cinnamon and uh, yours might end up more malty than mine because I don't remember it being too terribly malty last year. Right. I, I used uh, and I'm going to use um, 1056 so I yeast, American Ale yeast. Uh, in addition to the to the grain bill we got a couple of cups of molasses going in at 60 minutes um, like Scott said, we're going to put two ounces of crystal, or uh, well, the recipe calls for two, whatever we adjust it out for the for the IBUs. Yeah, a couple ounces of uh, crystal at uh, 60 minutes. Uh, recipe calls for a couple of sticks of uh, cinnamon sticks at 45. Um, cinnamon sticks aren't always easy to find, but it's easy to find ground cinnamon. So uh, we're just going to use uh, about a teaspoon of ground cinnamon in place of that. Um, six whole cloves and uh, three teaspoons, oh no, six, six teaspoons, so two, two tablespoons of orange peels. That's also going in at 15. Uh, ginger root, uh, another two tablespoons uh, at 15. And then uh, two more ounces of crystal hops at 15. So you got basically your cinnamon and your cloves going in at 45, everything else going in at 15. Like I said, we're hoping to mash this around 156. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Yeah, we're going to use your your new mashing method that you've been playing yeah. with. Yeah, I got a... Well, well, you'll see it. We'll yeah. set up here. And I've used it a few times, but it's still dialing it in and trying to figure it out. At, here at Dr. Colbrew, we offer a wide selection. Uh, our malt extracts are Brees liquid, Muntins liquids, Brees dry malt extracts, Brewer's Best beer ingredient kits. And we carry a full line of grains from uh, 
Avangard, German malt, Dingemans, Muttons, Brees, a full line of specialty grains, special B, flake rice, white wheat, you name it, we've got it. And we will crush it for you, no charge. All right, this is Scott's mash ton. And uh, why don't you start with... Well, what, what is it? Where, where, did you, where, did you, where did you purchase this yeah. amazing piece of technology? Coleman Extreme. Uh, it's a 70 quart cooler. Um, designed to hold ice like for five days, so it, uh, it's pretty well insulated and they make a great mash ton. Then, I got this from a gentleman on, uh, oh, he's on Homebrew Talk, but he makes has a little side business where he sews up bags, so I bought this from him. There's a couple other ones out there. Are you, uh, so how, how'd you get the dimensions on that? Bag, I measured my cooler and send them to him and he makes them whatever size you want. So you uh, he wanted the inside and outside dimensions and based on what I saw him. What you got, you got anything inside there? I see you got to oh, stick sure. it on the yeah, outside here. Oh yeah, we got just a, a stainless steel ball valve and get outside, get a, a barb adapter. And you can actually buy these as a whole kit too. There's lots of the internet uh, people, or maybe your local homebrew supply might carry the equipment. And that's just a half inch coupler in there, and I've got a 90 degree street elbow screwed into that, which allows me to get, I get a siphon going. And this picks up just off the very bottom. I mean, there's a, you know, a 16th or an eighth of an inch of space of right, mm -hmm. a little more down. Which, uh, so this thing should, First, I haven't. First time I've used it with that elbow. Oh, okay. So we'll, we're we're experimenting. I'm, I'm expecting there to, that to help. There should be almost no nothing left in the ton when I'm done. Okay. You know? Okay. So well, then you... I put a hose on here, which this is important. So this hose goes on here, and we boil drain off into the boil kettle, and that creates a siphon. So there's like a vacuum going. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's actually sucking the wants to draw all the war out of the uh, out of the mash tun. Mm -hmm. I found this bag is working out really well. It's pretty easy to clean, and uh, that was my solution to uh, as opposed to making some kind of copper PVC manifold or something. Or some people use uh, like the toilet line braids, stainless steel braid from a water supply line, which and all those systems work. Right, or like Steve's got where he's got an actual yeah, false he, bottom in it, which we showed. <laughs> yeah, he made one out of like plexiglass or something, drilled a thousand little holes in it. This was oh, yeah. this was easier. Send off the dimensions, yep. get it back. And then I like it for cleanup too, it's really easy. It seems yeah. pretty easy. Too. And it's got the little things on it there, a little so you can kind of pick it up handles all all the way around. Yeah, and I mean some people they have a hoist and they'll lift up their bag to drain it and whatnot. I mean, it it's kind of mixing brewing a bag and mash ton into that same thing. Yeah. Because you know? uh -huh. like, I, I, I have done brewing a bag brewing before too, and I was like, well, why not just why don't want to switch to the cooler? It was a long day though. I was you're, tired. You're at 180 here, Scott. You probably want to okay. shut that off. Yeah. Might be 179. Okay. Hmm? We might be mashing 155. It's a real high mash temperature, like you said. All right. And that valve's closed, right? find out, won't we? Yeah, it's closed. <laughs> or no, wait, which is closed? Uh, sideways. No, it's open. <laughs> it was completely opened. All right. You weren't, you weren't to a height yet where it mattered, apparently. Ask me how I know to check that. <laughs> <laughs> Scott says he's accidentally dumped water all over his floor once before. Water is not the problem. Beer or work would be. <laughs> but uh, we actually went, heated this tank of the water up to uh, about 180. Gives us uh, a little bit of room here for to heat the mash tun up. That'll drop our strike temperature once the mash tun's heated up to about 170, 171, somewhere in that neighborhood. We mix our grains in, that'll drop us down to right in the neighborhood we want to be 156. We're not going to fret over a degree or two one way or the other. And if you're there, they'll be low and high. 158's getting pretty high. Yeah, it's supposed to be 156. 
so I don't think we're going to be having a problem there. So you want to help me dump that in there? Or? Okay. Uh, we can hit this light? Uh, probably. Maybe I should just give me just a second. Now, Beer Smith's clean. Can we sit for a minute? And we'll set the top on it and wait. Yeah. So put the top on there and then let the let it just heat up for five or ten minutes. Make sure that the that our temperatures are where we want them to be. Is yeah, then we'll take the temperature of that and uh, when it, it should 171, be. that's when we're ready to dump our greens in. Assuming that our greens are somewhere around 60 degrees. Yeah, they gotta be pretty close. It's about 60 degrees in here. <laughs> I think we're pretty good. We're just a touch over 170. What do you see there? I see that it's too too close to my eyes. Uh, yeah, I'd say you're right. Just a skosh over 170. So we, we are good green. to go. You want to pour and I'll stir, or do you want me to pour and you stir? Huh. All right, I'll stir. All right. I'm going to start with the small one first. <laughs> All right. Yes. The whisk takes care of the dough balls quite nicely. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, the whisks work pretty good for dough balls. Yeah. Don't worry about it at all. So when I'm doing it by myself, it's more of a pain in the ass, and I dump and pull, dump and stir, dump and stir. I don't really have to be all that careful. So, yep. I mean, I'm going to hand the whisk to you in a minute because I'm going to start getting my pH stuff ready. We're going to actually <laughs> test pH. This guy's getting high tech on me. So go ahead and here and go for it. So it's pretty well done already. I'm going to pull this thing right in. There, I see you got like a string on here. Does that not help? Or don't you? Uh, I don't, you could probably cinch it up if you wanted to. Well, I just worry about pulling um, it in. It's kind of creepy. I just always keep addressing it, pulling down on them handles. They say you're not really supposed to lift by those handles. That's what the guy gave me a warning. <laughs> it's pretty well. I will not be held responsible for if you use this the way it's designed. Well, yeah, because guys like who do brew in a bag, they like to lift it up and drain it. Yeah. And, and he probably doesn't want to be held responsible. He's got 30 pounds of wet grain in a bag that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're for positioning, not for lifting. But. You can lift by these. That's what he's telling you to do. Is lift, you yeah. know, or coil it up and use those to lift. Huh. There's one on each side or each end. You should have something like that down there somewhere. So you just lift by the yeah, lift by the whole cord that goes around the hole. Well, that makes sense. But not by those four hands. Yeah, yeah. That is one nice whisk. You can make a hell of a lot of pancakes with that whisk. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I guess yeah, there, there was hinges on it. That I there was, off. but they were in the way, so they're well. gone. You're out of here, buddy. I think it's picking really close to 160. Well, let's leave the top off. Then pull it on the next one. So we are a few degrees high. No, I don't want to put down. I'd like the temperature to come down a little. I mean, I could add a, <laughs> add a little cold water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Like and a heavy two quarts here, Chris. So, no, so we got to remember we put that half a gallon in there. We'll, we'll take a measurement to collect that volume. Yeah. Like, oh wow! Yeah, wow! Well, really, how, how did that drop so far? Well, well you know what? Maybe because it's quarts the, of cold water. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we didn't take a temperature reading when we did but that. That kept stirring and stirring and stirring. It. That's what we just did. But I'm knowing we, when you first put that quart in, we didn't take a temperature. Yeah. I can't believe two quarts dropped it that far, though. That's that's yeah. a huge amount of. Of course, it was cold water too. It wasn't. Can I open this up? Then? You can actually open it and stir it the hell out of it if you want. One more time before we do this. Hey, I don't even 
even have to really worry about your grain bit getting appropriately compacted or anything. But it probably should. I'm pretty happy with the system. I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah. Well, I've never. I know you've ta been talking about it. This is the first time I've seen it in action. So far, I like it. But this is the. Here comes the, the test here. Trains, if I, you're out of my back deck, you can hear the trains, but don't hear them in the house. It's kind of cool. I like going outside at night, getting go out to get a beer in the summertime, and the trains going by. And the trains sunshine. and the coyotes. <laughs> we do get some coyotes out, are we? Not a lot. We get quite a few around here. Well, I, I think we because of the, my dogs. Oh well, they're not close. Yeah, they're. I can hear them. I think they're over like Waltz, <laughs> you know, or over. Right. Yeah. Over they're, in the vineyards like or whatever. They're not. They're not far away. Yeah. And then, well, they. I've heard them out back a big couple of years ago. We got this huge field across the street. Too. Yeah, I heard them out back a few years ago, but um, my dog. I have my dogs out at that point. Boy, they're. There is one up. They're like, ah, that looks like fun. Let's go find that. How clear does that look? To you? That's that's a tad cloudy. He's not shiny yet. So, I think we're ready? As ready as we're going to be, I think. I think so, too. We can start to set up this. Maybe a few minutes until our uh, sparge waters. Yeah, that's got to be around 170, 175. There's a thermal meter. I'm not saying it's there yet. I'm just no, saying I just that's wanted, where we want it. I wanted to check it, is my point. toes underneath the, the electric heater here. Boy, it's warming my toes up a little bit. They, they could use it in this house. <laughs> what is that, vinegar? No, it's fine. What? LSD. Oh, even better. <laughs> <laughs> Put some of that in my eye. And my precision measuring. Is that acid? It is acid. Acid? What is it? It's it's phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid. acid. I got gallons of mercuric acid. <laughs> That's like you used to clean concrete, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually, there is a food grade version of that that you can <laughs> possibly use, or you could use, you know, sulfuric acid. Any kind of acid you can actually use. Not any kind. I shouldn't say that. Start, start Citric, sulfuric. As they start spitting in there. Uh, <laughs> there's. Lots of different kinds you can use. We're almost at 160s. We're about 170 here. All right, you need to get five more probably. Five more degrees? Yeah. So you want to get up to about 175? Yeah, should be good. Okay. I, I'm not going to grab that whole thing and pick it up anyways. And that's the whole thing. If you have your sparge or your pH all under control, mm -hmm. you can sparge with boiling water. It's yes. not too hot. Yes. Um, but we don't have our pH under control. <laughs> We're trying, but uh, right. Uh, the idea with sparging is you, you sparge until your gravity reading gets down to a certain point, or your pH gets down to a certain point, and then you stop because you don't want to. If you get your pH too low, it starts to leach the tannins out. Right. The if, they say if your water is over 170, you're in danger of leaching the tannins out. But that's only true if your pH is off. Right. If your pH is too high, you can leach tannins at 170. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're 100. Let's say 175. Yeah, we're definitely ready to start adding soon. Are we going to do like a batch sparge or a fly sparge here? I'm going to batch sparge. So okay. I, I'm going to turn the valve off. 
put the whole thing put, in there. Put the water in there, mix it up, let it sit for maybe 10 minutes, and then run it back again. Okay. First time with a full batch sparge here. So we're oh, at least 7, 172, 172, right. 172, I mean, Well, that's probably close enough. 173, yeah, we might be at 175, actually. Our grain bed keeps cooling down with our lid off, you know. So. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're over 175 at this point. So shut the heat off. Yep. Unplug that. So we're going to shut the, uh, shut this valve down. Oh, it's still hanging out. Well, I don't think so. Oh, a little bit, yeah. I think we should wait till it quits raining. Do you really? We gotta get home sometime, can What's up, dude? Wait a little longer. Oh. I'm, in my experience, that, that, they'll, they'll just keep draining for like forever. Well, it will. I mean, I don't even... That, that's still actually coming out there. All right. Are we ready? No, we can't just pick that up. We'll do it. Jeez, I thought with the two of us. Probably could have been. Six gallons of water between the two of us? It's hot. It's not boiling <laughs> hot. <laughs> it's, it's just scalding hot. There's a difference. <laughs> I thought we were having a competition so who could burn each other the best. No, 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 no. I don't want to go there. Now we're getting where we can lift it and do it. I have a hot pad so I can... Or you can. There's one right next to you. There's one you can use. I, I, All right. I, I got shirt sleeves. I'll probably do that by myself. We can it together. Which way are you going? This way? I don't know. And up over this side? Sure. Set that one aside over there now. Almost. I think this pot is kind of cheap. I would never really trust lifting it. <laughs> Full. 15 gallons of. I think those handles would come right off of that. And we got another. Cooler's almost full again. We're a couple inches from the top. Yeah, I was a little concerned. <laughs> So you're going to bore loft again then? Yeah, yeah, I need to, I mean, I really think a couple quarts is enough. I don't know if it can take several gallons like that. Because yeah. again, when I go into my fermenter, I filter again at that point with a bag. I'm going to want this to sit about 10 minutes, Chris. Okay. So you looked at the time? Seven o'clock. Thank you. All right, so we have a little over six gallons in here. Probably we're looking at six, six and a quarter, probably. So we put another six in there, so we're going to be... And that long, I mean, we'll get all that six back. So we'll yeah, be and maybe a little and more, and you want it to be at 13 or something, I think, according to your... Yeah, I think if we boil for an hour, this calls for an hour long boil. Yeah. We'll boil off between a gallon and a gallon and a half. So we'll have we'll have plenty. If we end up with each end up with five, that's that's I mean, if we end up with I like to figure my recipes for five and a half going into my fermenter. Mm -hmm. Because that gives me some room to lose crap the on half the half that I lose in the bottom or that's, you know. that's why I'm starting to use the L pails for a primary. I'm, you know, definitely my my brewing has changed. Well it's always changed over the years. I mean it's a, as a changing process, but I've never liked the primary. I always like to go right into the carboy, but I'm tired of losing beer on the on the basement floor. So I'm going into an ale pail, going in a little heavy, so I you know I might I put six gallons off and, uh, put six gallons in there, or half a half a gallon of headspace. I can I don't lose lose it all over. You know, I'm blowing off the, through my airlock, and then I can leave trub in the bottom and still put five gallons in my keg. keg. Right. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. But I'll be honest, even do, if I do a 10 gallon batch or shoot for an 11 gallon or whatever, I almost never end up with 10 full gallons anyways. I'll end up with nine and a half. So I've been overshooting because I've, every little teeny aspect is a 
variable that you can set in Beersmith. And I think my numbers are a little high, so I keep overshooting, and I got to keep dialing them back a little bit. And a little we did bit. drop the temperature a little. I mean, I think we dropped it too far. We should have. So we'll know next time only put a quart of water in, not two quarts. <laughs> yeah, two quarts did change it more yeah. than I thought it was going to. I, me too. Yeah. I did not expect that, but that was cold water. But even at that, I didn't yeah, expect it tap water. But it's not I didn't any... expect it to drop it. It dropped it a lot farther than I expected it to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, and I usually brew in a maybe it would have settled like down too, but I usually brew in a kettle like that, or mashing a kettle, or mashing a kettle like that, and then I just set that on the concrete floor, and it doesn't it doesn't change with a ten gallon batch with that much grain, it doesn't change. I, a five gallon batch, if it's a thin, well, you know, a lighter beer, well, how it'll, many it'll change. How many degrees do you think you lose over an hour? One. Wow, that's pretty good. That's <laughs> like I don't I don't really need. The ma you know, to mash in a cooler, it, it's just, if I'm doing a 10 gallon batch, I think if I've got over... Because you see these guys wrapping, you know, the insulation around their <laughs> stuff. Or if I get more, if I've got more than, and, more than 12 pounds of grain... And do you have a cover on it when you're mashing them? No. Not even a cover? Ah, oh, I might put, Maybe a cookie, that. I put a cookie sheet over it or something. Right. <laughs> you know, mostly so the... Don't get nothing birds falls in into it, it yeah. right? <laughs> But yeah, no, I don't, it, I mean, I, I did get surprised once or twice with doing five gallon batches if I was doing a, a, th a, a, a smaller beer and I didn't expect the temperature to drop and it did. I, I lost, you know, five degrees. I'm like, holy crap, I <laughs> didn't expect that. But uh, if I'm doing a 10 gallon batch or if I'm doing even a five gallon batch, it's a, like a, this beer when I did a five gallon batch last year, I did it on my stove and I didn't even lose, I didn't even lose a degree in an hour. And an hour mash. So no, I think people are a little anal about stuff like that that they don't really need to be. Yeah, you know, so if you're doing a you know a small batch, like one or two gallons or three gallons, right. like that, then you got to worry about it. Yeah, thermal mass makes a big difference. It does. I mean, doesn't? I, I set that that metal pot right on my concrete floor. Now, you know, I've now I haven't brewed in, you know freezing weather outside with a and set my brew pot on the on the concrete. But in the summer it's not a problem. In my kitchen it's not a problem. I brewed outside in the winter before. Yeah. And you, you lose a little bit. You lose more heat in the winter, no doubt about it. If it's, if it's cold. If it's, if it's cold and windy, <laughs> yeah. it can be hard to even, I mean your boil can take a long time. But I've had, you know, even trying to cool like some of the bigger batches if I don't have a Wort chiller, and I can't fit it into my sink, you know, to, to give it a water bath. I've tried putting the kettle outside when it's cool out with a fan on it, and it still takes hours to cool down <laughs> to pitching temperature right. when, you're, when you're trying to cool it down. So I'm collecting some wort here so that I can take a pre-boil gravity reading. All right, this Let's isn't even pre-boil. This is first run gravity first reading. First run, pre same thing. No, it isn't. Say. No, because it won't be your, your pre-boil will be after you finish this. Oh, well, yeah, this will be first run if you're right because we're not going to it. But that's still. I bet you that's nice and high. <laughs> yeah, it should be pretty high. <laughs> Are we done stirring this then? Should I get the right, right, yeah, I don't care. I could stir it. Well, I would say we should probably stop stirring. And How's our 10 minutes here? Yeah, it's been 15. Okay. We're good to go. We can start. Start boil again? Yes. All right, we're pretty much done with the whisk then, or are you going to um, use that during the boil too? I'll probably just throw it in that pot. It's all pre-boil. I was just asking where you wanted it, I guess. Yeah, pre-boil's not... I'm going to rinse my hand off a little sticky. Actually, I'm going to rinse the thing off, too, because the handle's sticky. <laughs> For some reason, that handle's a tad sticky. Well, you got your hot water tank set nice and high, huh? <laughs> I do. <laughs> It's a brewer's trick, right? <laughs> it gets me, to, gets me to, to mash temperature faster. <laughs> Man, we could take those apart. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, now I know, what to, look, now I know what to look for. <laughs> you know, you've never taken the top off of them? No. 
Oh, I took mine apart and clean them just between every keg. Do you? Oh, okay, yeah. I see. It's got a good thing on top. Maybe, maybe that's why it's leaking. <laughs> maybe it's yeah, just okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it, Chris. Go for it. I don't care if a little bit of flour gets in there. Yeah. Well, I guess we can start firing this up and get it and start eating it. Plug her in. The acid will lower the pH. The acid will lower it. Um, actually, the pH will get too high. The pH that, will get too high. Okay. So you put the acid in, so that should help with that. Right. As you sparge, the pH goes up. Yeah. I'll double check and make sure. No, no the pH goes up. And, uh, because the grains, I started to tell you, you were doing something else and couldn't listen. But it's all about, a lot of it's about the buffering capacity. And I started to say I should add some of this phosphoric acid to my water just until it starts to change because what will happen you'll add like three four or five milliliters and the pH won't change and then all of a sudden boom. then all of a sudden one more milliliter and it drops two points gotcha. that means the water the, you've used up the buffering capacity of the water and because of all the mineral different kinds of minerals you have in your water right yeah um, then the grain when you use that as your mash or your sparge water, the grain will pull it down. Because the grain, the grain's acidic. Right, the grain lower, lowers, lowers the, the pH. Right. If it can, the right, but okay, it you get to has, a certain point. So it has its own buffering capacity. And it gets right? to, but you get to a certain point and you've washed so that after, out, after you're you adding the mash, water. Right, you're adding your, you're done with your mash, you've used up all the buffering capacity in of the grain, and then you're just adding and water. You're, and you're the adding water's... water, the pH goes up. Gotcha. And as the pH goes up, then you, you start, start to extract tannins. Leach tannins. Right. right. Okay. You leach tannins. See, that all makes perfect sense to me. Cameras on. We're good. <laughs> um, we're gonna have some. We're just gonna be some show notes about pH. You guys really should start reading the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really notes. They're more like links to people that actually. No more no than us. Oh, no, and a lot more than us. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to throw hops in there. Yeah, we can now. Slowly. I got the disc. Oops, time for our... What was I adding? Oh, I know. So we need... Six full cloves. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. TSP. Like lowercase t. In case you never cooked before, a teaspoon is a lowercase t, a tablespoon is a capital T. Or uppercase. What? Camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I rebooted it a minute ago. Fresh ginger root. Yay. You got a zester. That, or you could use uh, one of these old style doohickeys here with all the different sides to it. And it'll make it so you can get it into a teaspoon or a tablespoon. It was boiling like that when we first started, it was been all over the floor. <laughs> stuff in first. 
Let me help. I want to help. Let me stir. <laughs> I want to stir. <laughs> You ready to get those in there? There's still water coming out. So we're... Nice Actually, we're pretty almost close to 10 minutes here at this point. Last, I think it was like 68, and last running was like 36. We got down close to 30. Right, but yeah. then you, when you adjusted it for temperature, it was like 36. Okay, right. I think the first one was like 68, wasn't it, after you adjusted it? I think it, it was. Yeah, I think it was. It was actually yeah. a little bit high. We were doing good. And yeah. where are we at now? That's, that's pre-boil. Maybe 50. 50? Look at this. Scott has moved up. He what? actually he actually has a, a threaded thing on his... Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another. <laughs> no, no, no duct tape and, and towels <laughs> for this man. He is like so there. We're ready to start chilling, right? We are. We're chilling, man. Yeah. So how I changed before? I used to like try to let everything settle down. Right now, I just do that. No. Now I stir. Now. You can go to the paint strainer. Well. And I whirlpool out. Whirlpool doesn't hurt either. Right. I stir now, which which really helps to cool faster. Mm -hmm. Which I think is good. It helps. It the faster it cools, the faster it cools, the better. Yeah. So it helps. It cools faster, and uh, does make a big difference too in the whirlpool too, and how clean. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this stuff does really end up in that. Yeah. And you will pull it, and it all forms a cone, like in the center. And um, the problem that I see with it is actually everything is still a little bit too loose and runny. Mm -hmm. You do get a little pile in the center. I'm gonna say like 158 or something. That, that's about where I was thinking. And then we're at 90 degrees here. I mean, it so it's not as big as we think. We're, we're way over volume. Well, yeah, but yeah. Well, it was only 62, I think, when I last. And once you temperature correct it, we're not going to be too far off, I don't think. I'm going to see one more time real quick. I'm just being the face. I'm being. Boy, that extra gallon makes a difference. All right, we're, we step out of the camera there a second. So we got that whirlpooling. It's a new technique. Yeah, I invented it. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna let that sit for about 15 minutes or more, and then that'll help all the the trub settle out, get into the middle, form a cone. You get that magic tea leaf thing. Going. Yeah, whatever the hell that is. And then we'll siphon the siphon them after we. Uh, as it settles down a little bit, but that should help help it clear out a little. And then we're gonna siphon through a, a paint strainer today. There we go. It's been about five minutes, maybe six, maybe Every ten. Definitely less than less than ten. So it's done, done whirlpooling. Now we're just letting it settle out. And it will. All right. You said that the pile is usually in the middle. Yes. Yeah, so you want to keep that as close to the edge as you can. It seems slidey. I'm a delay hanger. These things don't go on here that well. It's weird. Yeah. And then it's going to go at an angle. Right. I usually do that and let it not worry about it. As long as I keep it near the edge, it wants to go to the center though. So, gotcha. So if you just kind of tilt it sideways. Right. Do you want to use uh, that? Well, that is definitely get that got, a little higher. <laughs> definitely got a bunch of scrunch there. Yeah, it's not been long enough yet. Like I said, I'm just gonna use an American. 
AL yeast 1056. I got actually I made enough here for uh, for both of us, but I'm gonna use it all because I really don't want to under pitch this yeast, which uh, is a distinct possibility. I supposed to use that? <laughs> well, you can, or you don't have to. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm a pie enough. I got this uh, it's a paint strainer bag that you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's. And they're made to fit a five-gallon bucket. They fit these buckets pretty well. I got it written down. I'll, I'll, I'll know better when I edit the video. And I hit my lid. Ah, right there. Yeah. Well, I can see Schmeg in, the, in that strainer already, which I, well, so that means that all that Schmeg is going into your strainer and into my beer. <laughs> like I said, I don't know whether it makes all that much difference. Well, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see which one's clear. Well, we'll try and see. We, that means we both have to be drinking them at the same time, which doesn't usually happen. <laughs> if they're markedly different, you know. Well, there Good night, we go. folks. There's Good night. another brewing session <laughs> with two guys brewing. Yeah, we'll be tasting this stuff in yeah, a few weeks. Way before it's prime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we want to get this on the internet before solstice. So, so yay. And that's what we're brewing it for. Solstice beer. Hi, I'm Steve Spears. I'm the owner of Dunkirk Homebrew. We are a local uh, homebrew shop here in the Dunkirk, Fredonia area, uh, located at 3375 East Main Road, Dunkirk, New York. We are a full line um, supplier of beer and wines, wine brewing equipment and supplies. Come on down, most of my customers become my friends. Thank you. All right, so we're judging our, our solstice ginger tonight. Um, and. Uh, Scott, my half is still actually sitting in the keg or in the, the secondary at home. It's still working a little bit. Um, Scott used a different yeast and his finished off a little early. Earlier, his actually finished off appropriately. Mine should have been done two weeks ago and it's not. <laughs> so, uh, so we're doing Scott's night. He used uh, Windsor Ale yeast and um, I might use that next year because I really like the way this beer turned out. I've got uh, for aroma. Uh, I've got uh, there's a slightly malty smell and I definitely smell some spices. I gave it a six out of twelve. Uh, for appearance, uh, the color and the head are great. Uh, it is a little bit cloudy, uh, so I gave it a two out of three. Uh, for flavor, I said it's uh, slightly malty, a good spice balance, and it's not at all sharp. Uh, Fifteen out of twenty. Uh, for mouthfeel, good body and uh, carbonation level, which is impressive just Scott just carved this up a couple hours ago <laughs> just kegged it um, so it's I think this beer has got a, a good head retention uh, it's warm and creamy and not astringent uh, I gave it uh, a 5 out of 5 for mouthfeel on overall impressions uh, 8 out of 10 I really like this beer uh, I can't wait for mine to finish now uh, total score 36 out of 50 next you know what we're doing? sure um, aroma, I s can smell the banana flavor. I can't smell anything else, but I gave it a 12 out of 12. I like the aroma. Uh, appearance, it's got a nice appearance, but it's a little cloudy. Nice color. And uh, gave it a 2 out of 3. The flavor, I gave it a 20 out of 20. It's got a good balance, malty flavor. Not overly malty. Uh, Mouthfeel, um, I gave it a five out of five, even though it does have the diacetyl slickness on the tongue feel, but it didn't bother me. It wasn't off-putting at all. 
uh, overall impression was a 9 out of 10. Could have a little more carb and the slickness on the tongue feel a little bit, but it's might off put some people that it didn't bother me. So I gave it a 48 out of 50. That's a very nice score. <laughs> <laughs> you had to taste more of our beers. We yeah. like the look. I have tasted score. some of your beers. I don't score as high. <laughs> I didn't get a lot of strong aroma out of it. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of beer smell, but uh, it's maybe my sense of smell is not working too good. So, so I I gave it a 10 out of 12 anyway. I mean, I could smell a little bit, but not. It just smells like beer to me. Nothing in particular. Nothing bad. Nothing good. Nothing either way. So, uh, for appearance, I gave it a two out of three. Uh, flavor, it's a little estery. The English yeast, I can taste that. And like I said, I get a touch of the ginger and a touch of the orange peel, which is actually how I like, because I don't really like... So where are we at? Flavor, I gave it an 18 out of 20. I like the way... I did this first time I ever used Windsor yeast, and I like the way that it... Uh, I'll try it again, and something else, and see what... Uh, Mouthfeel, I put very nice, creamy, not too thin. Um, so I gave it a 5 out of 5, and overall impression, I said it's a pretty good beer, and gave it a 9 out of 10 for a total score of 44. Right. And yeah, I'm pleased how it turned out. Me too. I, I'm impressed with this. I, so, uh, here's to us. Cheers. Cheers.